why we study uh, matter at high pressure? Well, I, as you may see there, these are the natural variables. So the important thing is that atmospheric pressure is almost a coincidence in, in all the natural processes. So if we change by pressure, also by temperature, or even with other uh, properties, the length scale of the inter interatomic distances, we, we are able to change the properties of this material. That's the idea. The whole idea of what we are uh, studying high pressure. How we study that pr high pressure? Well, that's, that's the point of most of the talks of this introductory school. It's because uh, we need, and it's almost a requirement now in high pressure studies, both experimental and theoretical techniques. And if you look at the journals and most recent publications, you will uh, realize that the interaction between theory and experiment, it's almost uh, like a requirement for publication, okay? And we will also employ both microscopic and microscopic views because not all the theoretical models are amenable for studying high pressure processes. Some uh, complex processes, uh, especially those involved in biological systems, are too complex to, to, to make uh, detailed microscopic uh, uh, description of the system. And what we're trying to explain is both physical and chemical phenomena that are induced by pressure. So by pressure, we not only change uh, the structure, but also we are, uh, without changing the chemical composition, we may induce phase transitions. But uh, as we will see in other talks, we also can make or can induce chemical changes in our system. That's the whole idea. So. In fact, uh, high pressure chemistry is not uh, so advanced at physical high, uh, phenomena in, in high pressure, but I think that this is changing. And probably you will be the leaders of, uh, of, of this change in the future. In fact, the, the frontier between f uh, physics and chemistry in high pressure is, is pretty difficult is to, to, to differentiate. So high pressure, the, the first idea is a very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary area. And you can uh, realize uh, about that idea in the, in the program of the school. Because you have theory, you have experiment, you have uh, several talks about the structural determination, both uh, with diffraction techniques and optical, uh, vibrational spectroscopy, etc., And also special techniques for studying uh, materials under very extreme pressures and temperatures, also some chemistry, and also some uh, applications in geo and biosciences. The whole idea is that it's pretty difficult that one group, one team, or one scientist to be able to understand all these phenomena. That's the whole idea of high pressure, and you will understand why all many people involved in this uh, area is continually interacting, and also justifies in some part, the, the, the topics included in our conference. All, all, all the high pressure conferences are like very weird for other people because what, uh, what are you talking about in your conference? And, and you say, of everything. You say, this guy's crazy. No. Because we go from biological to geological processes to theory, different experiments, novel techniques, uh, large facilities, because not all the experiments can be done in a in a desktop laboratory, in your own laboratory, so you will be uh, forced sometimes to, uh, to apply for proposals in, in SRF and other large facilities. Why? You will understand later, because of the size of, this, of the sample. And that's one of the ideas of high pressure, is that uh, the size of the sample and the kind of study I want to, the, and, and the kind of study I would like to, to perform will determine the, te the experimental technique that we have to use. And it's also the idea of the Spanish group of high press, that it's the, the people involved in the organization of this school and also of the conference. And goes from physicists, both experimental and, and, and theoretical, chemists, to uh, biologists, to, and also scientists and technologists. So, the whole idea is that if you want to, to get into a high-pressure group, a high-pressure team, a high-pressure project, 
you have to be open to interact with other people. Okay? Be open-minded and to uh, share all the information between all, all these fields, because otherwise this field will, will never advance. So that's the whole idea. It's very multidisciplinary. It's necessary to, to, uh, to have interdisciplinary teams and be an open-minded scientist. Well, when we talk about high pressure, there's always uh, a problem. That's the, probably the biggest problem in high pressure. Recently, I received a mail from a friend and I said, I have to make um, an experiment at uh, 20 bars. So, as you are a specialist in high pressure, I will ask you for, for a device. And I said, well, uh, this is uh, the third figure of our error in our measurements. Hmm? So, what means high pressure? Usually, high pressure, we refer to high pressure to those phenomena occurring above 1,000 atmospheres, roughly. Okay? But if we consider those uh, applications in food technology, for instance, you will find that there are lower pressures that are interesting for, for high pressure. So the, the frontiers between pressure, uh, high pressure, ultra high pressure, or whatever, are, are, are not very well defined. In any case, one of the problems is units. Not, not because of the definition of pressure, that is force over area. And the uh, international system unit is Pascal. The problem is that's too small. And as in other uh, scientific fields, many people use the units that are used to talk with, uh, with his mates. So you will find uh, in our field megapascals, kilopascals, I don't think so. <laughs> Pascals, of course not. But from megapascals to kilobars to GPA. And say, oh, uh, what, what did you say MPA? I don't know. Everybody talks about megapascals or GPA. That's it. <clears throat> so, and, and, and where say the GPA is not there, okay? So, one rule of thumb. First, look at the, look at the units, okay? Because sometimes uh, you, you can be wrong because you don't understand what the units are, are there. Okay, so one GPA, roughly 10,000 bars. That's it. One kilobar or one GPA, 10 kilobars. That's roughly our units in, 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 in our fields. If you go to food chemistry or biological applications, you will go to the megapascal range. Several hundred of megapascals, okay? But most of the, of the knowledge and and the thinking about high pressure recalls not the force over surface or area definition, but just to realize that pressure can be understood as energy over volume, okay? So that will determine a lot of uh, uh, problems or limitations in high pressure studies, why? Because uh, the amount of energy that we can put in a system is not limited, but almost limited. So if we want to study large volumes, the pressure that we will reach will be lower. So not all the techniques can be used to study different phenomena. So that's also typical. That uh, people with large volume, can I put this in two GPA, say how many liters? And that's a problem. Hmm? <clears throat> So if you want to go up to 2, 3 GPA, 3 GPA it's how much? How many kilobars? Okay, 30 kilobars. And say, uh, 10 cubic centimeters. Then you have to ask uh, Stefan, huh? is that possible? Well, it's, it's not easy, no? It's not easy. And depending on the uh, technique that you want to use to probe that experiment, you, have to, you, you can have problems. It's not the same to make a Raman experiment or a neutron scattering experiment or whatever. So the idea, 
you cannot perform all the experiments under high pressure conditions or at least under all the high pressure conditions. So the different techniques will be used in different studies and for different phenomena. Okay? That's a very important point and you will have different examples here and along the along the school. And the other idea is that uh, the connection between pressure, volume, temperature, and energy will limit the landscape in energy that we can prove, that we can access. Because most of the interest in high pressure is to, uh, to generate novel materials that can be all quenched or not under atmospheric uh, conditions, but at least to know the properties of this novel material under extreme conditions of pressure usually combined with temperature. So we will, we will uh, return to this later, but the idea is this, is that you may change the energy of the system by combining pressure, temperature, and other energies. Photochemistry, we will see uh, an example, etc. So when we talk about high pressure, we don't have to limit to pressure. That is also another problem in, in our field. Is that pressure is the unique variable that uh, we have to use. Not at all, okay? Because there are uh, interrelationship between all the, all the uh, thermodynamic variables of the system. That's the, one of the reasons why one field in high pressure, that is the study of uh, the equation of the state, <laughs> That is the most boring field in high pressure that I was, I dedicated like a 10 years in my life. <coughs> Equation of a state, yes, yeah, it's boring, but it's very needed. Hmm? Because uh, the equation of a state is the mathematical relationship that will allow you to study the thermodynamic state of the system. And a small errors in the equation of a state, either the model, either the experimental values, whatever, will, uh, can, can, can be a disaster for, for, for uh, predictions. So if you look at many publications, you will realize that most of them include includes the, the study of the equation of state in both theoretical and experimental methods. Why? Because we need to know, and for predicting new phenomena, the thermodynamic and kinetic uh, parameters of the system. And uh, the thermodynamic ideas that you have studied on, on basic thermodynamic uh, courses can be applied also to, to high pressure. Same formulas. But the models are not always very well known. And probably you will be involved in the derivation of new models in the future, fortunately. Okay? So, but another uh, idea surrounding pressure, especially for those people that are not used to to study pressure is what's, what happens when, when, when I compress a system. Typical uh, sentence, temperature and pressure have opposite effects. Wrong. Are completely different effects that can be combined. They are completely different, okay? Are not opposed. If you look at very simple potential energy interaction curve, what you see is that, and you will see, that the volume goes on this dimension, okay? So an expansion goes over here, and a compression goes over here. And you can modify the energy of the system by both pressure and temperature and other variables, okay? And of course the energy can be this. You can go over here, or you can go over here. And the uh, effect on the system will be completely different, okay? So these simple models will allow us to understand what's happening with pressure, with temperature, by combining pressure and temperature with other variables, okay? <clears throat> so what we are looking, when, when we are compressing our system, what we are looking is, if we want to uh, synthesize a new material, is to look for some minimum, whatever, or, that we could put the system here, and that could be a stable. And luckily, if we release the pressure, the system will be here with a different structure, with a different energy, and with different properties. This curve, in fact, what is nothing but the electronic ground state of the system. 
or the total energy of the system, okay? So these simple curves will give you an idea of what we want to. And also we have a side to the state. So the energy can be put into the system by pressure, by temperature, by absorption, okay? To get the system here, to get a new material, okay? That's the, the idea of uh, new synthesis, chemistry under pressure, but on this side, not on this side, okay? So, and what's this photo? What's here? Does anybody in the room knows what's here? <clears throat> what is it? It's a sample on the source of diamond candle. This is a diamond or of a diamond and cell. What's this? It's a broken anvil. And which component is this? <coughs> Peanut butter? No. <coughs> Dry tomato? No. <coughs> Some metal? Some metal? Some metal? Copper? For example? Hector, do you know where it is? <coughs> <laughs> Professor Lorenzana, please help me. It, it's a gas, it's a gas, <coughs> it's a gas. Carbon monoxide. Yes, this was my second experiment with Hector when I was as a postdoc in Liverpool with him. When I met also Raymond in Berkeley, okay? Like uh, 20 years ago? Yes. This is carbon monoxide, okay? Under pressure and temperature, no. Laser excitation, okay? Well, so we can change the aggregation state of our system. So when you ask for uh, this compound, it's a uh, and say, I have not all the details. I need to say pressure and temperature. Because everything can be a metal, can be solid, depending on pressure and temperature. So nitrogen is a gas. You will realize that it's not a gas later. <clears throat> or cannot be a gas. So we have to control both the thermodynamics and the kinetics of the system, OK? Under pressure. And that differs a little bit of what we're uh, used to do with uh, temperature. Why? Because any derivative of the with pressure of the energy, in the end, we are talking about the volume. Okay. Probably uh, Professor Winter will talk about the activation volume on biological reactions, and the idea is that. This is a, an example of the effect of pressure on the thermodynamics of this reaction. So all of us have uh, heard about the Le Chatelier principle, no? About the, how can we displace the equilibrium that is not, this is not true, we not displace anything. The equilibrium is the equilibrium, okay? <clears throat> but this is another discussion. <clears throat> the idea is that the system will try to, if we compare the system, we will try to, to get the, the lowest volume, okay? So if our reaction leads to a, a products that the volume is lower, probably pressure will be favorable or not for that process. What do you think? Yes, okay. And what happens with the kinetics? It's good, it's bad, pressure favors. Intermediate. Intermediate state. Okay, if, if you look at the model of the transition state, what happens? Usually you have the reactives and the products, the transition state, what do you think? They have more or less volume? More. More, because the system has to rearrange, okay? So what, what do you expect for a system under pressure from the kinetic point of view? Would be? It's no good. Could be no good. So 
that's the reason why we need to put also temperature in our system. Okay? Because probably in many reactions, pressure will hamper the formation of the transition state because probably it will have larger volume. Okay? Because the system has to rearrange to form a new compound. So pressure, kinetics, the transition state don't like pressure, okay, to form. So we need the, uh, to put some energy there to change the internal energy that will control the thermodynamics and the activation energy that will control the kinetics of the system. Okay, I'm sure that you will, you will have many, many examples. So that's the idea. We compress and we want to put here the system. Okay, this could be by simple compression, but probably we will need temperature too. But temperature, if we have no pressure, what do you think that will happen? If we only heat the system, where is going the ball? Where goes the ball? Okay, dissociates or could dissociate, okay? So pressure and temperature are opposite? No, are different, okay? First message. So if we combine both, we can then go all around the energy landscape and to reach specific states, specific minima in the uh, energy landscape that we would could be ben benefit for us. Okay, that's the whole idea. But but we need to combine pressure and temperature usually, depending of what we want to do. And luckily, if this kinetic barrier is not too high, we can maintain the system here, and we have a new material that we can study under pressure or once the pressure and temperature have been released, okay? Example. Diamond. And another kind of energy. Probably Margarita will talk about this in her talk. Yes, combination of pressure maybe temperature and absorption. And probably she will talk about multiphotonic processes. Multiphotonic are not too probably in normal systems. But under pressure, that probability increases. So we are able to put the system on the excited state to do chemistry, to do photochemistry by different absorptions. We don't need maybe hold on, to compress the system completely and then by light absorption we can put our system on the excited state. Okay? One photon absorption or two photon absorption. Okay? And once we have there our system, well we'll see. But this is what's happening on a typical photochemical semi experiment. It depends on intercrossing system constants, etc. Same thing. But we combine energy from the radiation with energy with pressure. Okay? So this closes the circle. It's pressure, volume, temperature, and energy, different kinds of energy. Okay? So pressure is another variable more. It's not so special. We love pressure, but it's not the only thing, first. But this is important. Second, we have to say to other people, pressure is also important. Okay, it's not the only one, but it's also important. Okay. Probably other, Constantine has reached here, and Stefan also, and other speakers, uh, We'll talk about different high pressure techniques, so I will not get into that. Only to say one thing is different techniques may cover or may access different pressure ranges. Okay? So if we go 
we like to go to the Terapascal Terapascal range you have to talk with Hector or with uh, Raymond don't talk with me okay or with the people with the people uh, involved in food chemistry say what Tera, tera what yeah. so here there is a scheme of different uh, techniques static and dynamic using high pressure not all this technique can be used for everything because of the volume of the sample the pressure that you can uh, apply how the pressure is applied we will talk later about what hydrostatic means if this means well the meaning we all have clear the meaning that's it hmm? so this uh, uh, the pressure temperature volume energy that we can put in the system limits the techniques and the characterization techniques that we can use on the different so if you need optical access in a multi anvil be prepared to say uh, to, to hear no <clears throat> Valentin can, be, can this be done no why a typical typical uh, one friend of mine here that Complutense he, he does uh, molecular dynamic simulations on on water hmm? and once came to my to my desk we were together from the PhD days I said why don't you take water and push it to 100 megapascal and then you uh, drop the, the temperature down to Mishima does it he said, exactly that's why Mishima published in nature and the rest of people try to replicate Mishima's experiment and he's not publishing in nature or in the community bulletin hmm? so the expertise and the available technique is pretty important so many times you say oh that, that experiment can be done no not all the experiments can be done and this is also a typical discussion with theorists so but I think that this is changing is that people involved in theory in the high pressure field is absolutely open to well at least my colleague is Afonso Hmm? Do you agree? Well, well that, that's one of the reasons that theoretical and experimental is in, in high pressure have to be in close touch. Because otherwise, the fight is served. And don't talk about, about high pressure with theorists that don't know about high pressure. Because for them, always the system is on its minimum. See, and if you push it, I don't know, the equilibrium state is on the minimum. See. No chato, that we say in, in Spanish. Hmm? Hmm? The new equilibrium is here. The problem is that you don't know how to calculate this equilibrium. Anyway, okay? So, be careful with the experiments that you try to plan. The computational effort that you are asking to call you because you say okay can you do these calculations of course and he does a calculation in uh, intervals of 10 GPA and then you have a measurement to 1 GPA it happened right maybe. yes maybe maybe <clears throat> so the calculation had to be done once again why? Because the error involved in the experiments and the theory. So you are doing, in principle, the same kind of theoretical experimental prediction experiment. But the ranges are completely different. The accuracies are completely different. So please, talk with your theorist, okay? Or talk with your experimentalist. That's the, that's the message of this, okay? Why? I'm not bad. Some, uh, well, in an introductory talk of high pressure, if there's not a photo of Percy Brickman, you have to kill the speaker, okay? <laughs> Directly. Say, go, go. So, Brickman, 
I, I won't stand on, on him, okay? He's the pioneer of high pressure, uh, the most outstanding high pressure scientist. Uh, if you have to plan an experiment, please check that Brigman has not done this experiment before, okay? You look at the collected works, hmm? because uh, probably you're in trouble and you're repeating and doing uh, worse the, the experiments of, uh, of done by Bridgman one century ago, okay? <clears throat> he studied everything, uh, and well, it will take an hour to talk about the Nobel Prize, the why, but the only idea, <clears throat> because the Nobel Prize for Riemann for for this, the principle of unsupported area, not for this, okay? If you look at the literature, you will realize that, the, in fact, the Nobel Prize for Riemann was for the development of principle of unsupported area. If you look at these closures, you will see that all the high pressure requirement has not changed in 100 years for all the valves and tubes. Anyway, Bridgman and Bills. Well, that's the most important technological development to date. You will see all the, all the high pressure techniques. Remember that image, okay? If you see important differences, talk with me, okay? Same thing, same idea, okay? The sample is here, something that uh, holds the sample between the compression anvils or whatever we used in this geometry or whatever, okay? But the idea is the same. And he studied everything. Well, it looks like uh, he studied also diamond, but never published nothing about diamond. But that's a funny story. You may, you may check that on, the, on one of the books that Hector gave me as a gift of Robert Hassan about the synthesis of diamond. Synthesis of diamond that you can read on that book or, or read the story because it's a very amazing, amazing story of a scientific example <laughs> of uh, how in a small amount of money for some four crazy guys can be converted into the, the most uh, important income for General Electric in money, okay? So scientists sometimes, but the important thing about the synthesis of diamond is that this scientist realized that two things. First, that pressure is not the only variable that we need to change the, the phase of the system because everyone is aware that Graphite and diamond are pure carbon, and in principle, if we compress the graphite, eventually will turn into, into diamond. Problem, kinetics, okay? Graphite is the stable state of carbon, stable form, but diamond should go to graphite, okay? Complete disaster for geologists. Hmm? So why, why it doesn't turn into graphite? Because of the kinetics, okay? So you want to return to the other side, we have to put temperature there. And this is a, the, why diamond could be synthesized was because two ideas. First, thermodynamics to know the equilibrium in pressure, the pressure temperature equilibrium line of graphite and carbon thermodynamic modeling, okay? Because you have to extrapolate. You have low pressure measurements, you have to extrapolate. And it's not the same to extrapolate here, here, because to the engineer, you have to say, you have to build an apparatus to get X temperature or pressure. And you may miss by another magnitude if you are far from the, for the, area that you have your measurements, okay? So thermodynamic modeling, first. Second, how to, how the diamonds are, are formed on nature, okay? Very deep, high pressure, high temperature. And third, where diamonds are, 
on Kimberlite catalyst. So even though the pressure and temperatures for synthesized diamond are correct, we need a catalyst for forming diamond, okay? Even a seed of diamond. And if you are interested, that's one of the problems of the what is called the first synthesized diamond that was a natural diamond that was grown. So the first diamond, the first synthesized diamond was done by Tracy Hall. That is this guy here. <coughs> on December of 1954. Okay? Come away. Two minutes. Good. I have enough. Last landmark. The diamond and cell. I want to stay on this. Because you will see diamond and cells like a two or three hundred, I guess. But the idea is that also developed like 50 years ago, okay? And still remains with the same design, essentially. Some uh, experiments, I will show you three. This one, it's nitrogen at 1.3 megabars. I pick up the photos when I was a postdoc with Hector. When I, when I came into his lab, I, this was the, the first sample I see under pressure. Okay, so we can reach a lot of uh, pressure above the megabar. You will see some examples in the conference and here. Okay, but size, very small, okay? The size of the sample could be very small. So what kind of techniques can be used to probe that sample? Not too many, okay? So be prepared to use large facilities and special techniques to probe samples at very, very, very high pressures, okay? And two examples to finish. When you look into the dark, what do you see? These are two examples that I look in YouTube and I cannot find the, the reference. So anyway, you may find, if you put that on <coughs> Google and YouTube, you will find these two, these two movies. One of them is ice freezing, okay? Pretty quickly, this is, have you seen that? Okay, it's a load. This is what you see on a diamond and bell cell if you put water, okay, and you compress it is water goes to I6. And then if you go down, then I6 will melt to water, okay? And you will see all the nucleation phenomena. It's a very nice experiment that you can do in, a, in your lab pretty easily, okay? So I wonder what happened in the first time that uh, the people and the National Board of Standards saw that under microscope, okay? so. Looking under a duck, it's a very special. And this one, this is an experiment in a duck with no gasket. And what do you see? You put the powder, AGI, and you compress it, and you see three colors. Why does it happen? Why happens this? The pressure distribution from the center of the cell to the edge, because on the edge, essentially, we have atmospheric pressure, okay? So this is a measure of what? Of the pressure distribution inside the cell. If you look at this substance, you will see that it has three phases at ambient temperature. This, that is the white one. This, that is metallic and is the black one. This, that is the yellow one, okay? So this implies that the pressure distribution inside the cell is not uniform. And that's the problem, is that and that's what I told you before. What's hydrostatic and what's not? Because 
hydrostatic and non-hydrostatic experiments will lead to different, probably will lead to, to different energy landscapes. If you can go to another minimum. <coughs> and if you make a calculation on the hydrostatic computer conditions, maybe your experiment goes like this, okay? It will be discussed on the, on the school, on all the conferences that you will go to high pressure, and that's one of the most important, probably, uh, discussions in under pressure, okay? One minute and I will finish. This is a photograph of a stress diamond within a diamond anvil cell. So by a simple optical experiment, you see that the diamond is very, very stressed. And if you look at the um, profile on a gasket duct and a an gasket duct, looks like this. And if you think about this, this is the reason why the duct, the sample, remains inside the duct. If this profile changes, the diamond will break. Eventually, the sample will go out, whatever. Okay, that's the reason why the sample gets into the duct. Okay? The, can this be checked? Yes, I will show you only one experiment from our group. Yes, by doing Raman experiments on two anvils with no gasket in between. So you may probe the stress state of the diamonds using X-ray or another characterization technique. That's the importance of all the techniques that you will study on the, okay? All along the, the school. So not uh, one of the characterization techniques is not more important than another, <coughs> okay? All of them are important and could be necessary for your experiment, okay? If you want to check some books, well, I put these three. For reference, this is uh, ours, that is coming. This is yours, that is more sp for a specialist, but uh, Stefan has, has done a very good job for everything. And that's from John Lovely. For instance, there's a lot of books. And thank you.